Well, markets are plunging globally, began early today, as U.S. recession fears caused turmoil globally. Japan's Nikkei 225 plunged 12 percent on its worst day since the 1987 Black Monday crash for Wall Street. Yeah, it isn't looking good in other parts of Asia either. Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea also felt the smack of fear. Even European markets and cryptocurrencies taking a pounding as well. Yeah, Bitcoin went from 62,000 to 52,000. Meanwhile, while the world is in panic, we have the decrepit Joe Biden in office and his continual vacation, while Kamala Harris is trying to blame things on former President Donald Trump. It's one more example that they have no idea at all what they're doing. Just a sign of things to come if Kamala Harris somehow falls into the Oval Office. What a frightening scenario. Here with me to discuss this is the president of the National Taxpayers Union, Pete Sepp. Pete, nice to have you here. Thank you. Um, my guess is going to be that if, if we go into a recession here, which has um, been upgraded to better than 25% chance now in the next few weeks, that the solution from these people in Washington, dump more money in, run those printing presses because it's served us so well so far. I mean, it will create massive inflation, more job losses. I mean, the unemployment rate's already higher than it's been in three years as of last Friday. Uh, we've got the Nikkei at 12.4% now as its bottom. The S&P went down, what, was it 1,000 points today? First time ever, it was the NASDAQ. I lost track. They're all getting killed, yeah. Pete. Yeah, pretty, pretty bad. And pretty bad. And of course, we have to remember Japan and several of the European countries now experiencing downturns, as well as the Asian ones. They own a lot of our debt. If they're broke, we're going to go broke, too. There will be no one around to keep buying up the debt securities that the Treasury has to keep issuing at higher and higher interest rates. So that's a major problem. And of course, if you look at this index called the VIX, which is an indication of investor nervousness, that's up more than 60% the last time I checked. It is going to be a rocky road ahead. I don't think that this is necessarily a day-long or a week-long phenomenon. We're going to look at more volatility over the next couple of weeks, maybe next several months. Yeah, it's uh, pretty bad. Let's see here. The Dow currently down just shy of 1,100. The Nasdaq down 600. It was, like I said, down more than 1,000. It's never done such a thing. The S&P uh, down 166. And just so we're clear on this, that's 3.1% on the S&P, almost 4% on the Nasdaq, uh, better than 2.7% on the Dow. A couple of trillion dollars vaporized today, Pete. And, and that comes out of people's 401ks and other places. Um, we that's were talking great. about this. Warren Buffett didn't lose money today because he had already moved into cash over the last... 30 to 45 days. People that saw it coming prepare, but the little guy, the average investor, the 401k, they get just, well, they just get clubbed, don't they? Yeah, that's right. And of course, there are many reasons why this is happening. Bad unemployment report, earnings reports are a little worrisome, conditions abroad, wars, of course, all of that. But there is the component of concern over Kamala Harris's economic and fiscal policy agenda. You know, nothing says believe me like campaign trail conversions where Harris is now saying, well, I'm going to back away from the 35 percent corporate tax rate that I was advocating when I was running for president. 28 is fine up from the current 21 well, that's not reassuring investors right now. They just got a lot of bad corporate earnings reports. And so all of this is going to snowball to the point where many people out there are going to say, gosh, I need to start pulling back my money from the U.S. economy because we may be in a much higher tax, higher borrowing situation than we even have now. I mean, that's the good news here. If Kamala Harris really does say, I'm not going to go worse on fiscal policy than what my boss has proposed, that still means $4.4 trillion in higher taxes, $17 trillion in deficit spending over the next 10 years. My bet is that she would go much, much worse than that based on her past record. I agree with you on that. And then there's quantitative easing, as they call it, as they put in more money and there could be emergency rate cuts. 
Uh, some people are trying to blame this on the Fed for not cutting rates fast enough, but the fact of the matter is they never got to three uh, to two percent inflation. Three was as close as they got. Uh, if they start pumping in money again, it's going to uh, spike inflation all over again. We'll have more job losses. Like I said, we're at the highest unemployment rate in more than three years now. And, and if they're not careful, they're going to wipe out all of the gains made during yes. Joe Biden's time in the Oval Office. All those gains will be gone. I mean, I'm looking at the board. Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, Tesla. doesn't matter where you look, it's bright red. Yeah, that's right. And you would think they would have learned the lesson from the 2021 American Rescue Plan Act, which has been blamed by nonpartisan sources for contributing to some of the inflation that followed. Now they're going to try and either do a quantitative easing or pump more money into the economy from the federal government. That would be a disaster. And that was one of the policies Kamala Harris had. Her response to the pandemic was four times bigger in terms of federal spending than what was actually Look, enacted. She would have added $22 the problem, trillion dollars to the debt. Look, she's, she's financially illiterate. Of course, I don't think Joe Biden's much better. Um, they're illiterate on how the internet works because she thinks the cloud is actually something in the sky. She actually believes that. I just played that sound bite a little while. I mean, it's bizarre. Uh, her knowledge of how the world works is remarkable. She seems to have a room temperature IQ. Uh, room temperature, by the way, is 72 for those of you scoring at home. I mean, they do have Milton Friedman videos available, don't they, Pete? They're still on YouTube, right? Yes, there are absolutely plenty of them. And Hayek and lots of other brilliant economists saying, yeah. slow it down. We just keep going further and further into debt with every recessionary response. And our fiscal capacity to do that is drying up. That's the problem yeah. we have. Our debt is already so big. Where are we going to find people willing to buy it up? Well, certainly not folks in Japan right now. Or, or Germany or China or elsewhere. Uh, economics in one lesson. Henry Hazlitt, read it, 1946. Not exactly a page turner, but uh, Miss Harris might benefit from that. Pete Sepp, president of the National Taxpayers Union, thank you for being here. My pleasure.